Hey, my name's Chris Levy, and um, I'm president of the Hungarian Pumi Club of America. We've had this breed since 1999. I, uh, I first saw them in Europe um, at the World Show in Finland in 1998, and I went there to watch the miniature schnauzers and fell in love with the breed. Um, it was love at first sight, and we had our first dog a year later. We've had, so we've had the breed for um, 17 years. And we've had other breeds in the past, but this is uh, by far the best one as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it's the only one we have now. They're supposed to have a little bit of terrier in them um, or terrier-like characteristics. And they do have uh, that kind of joy of life that a terrier has. But at the same time, they have a temperament more of, of a herding dog which is extremely smart, very eager to please, and they use their intelligence to figure out what it is that you want and try to please you. The breed originates in Hungary, and that's still where the majority of the population is now. Basically a Hungarian herding dog in 17th and 18th centuries. There really wasn't any effort to define the looks until around the 1920s and at that time they developed standards for the three Hungarian herding breeds which are the Puli, the Pumi, and the Moody. Um, and those were regional variations, so the Puli was from Eastern Hungary, the Pumi from Western Hungary, and the Moody from Southern Hungary. Uh, the coat is a fairly easy care. Um, they don't shed. You get hair out when you comb them, but they don't leave it on your furniture and your lap. So um, as much as any dog could be out hypoallergenic, these would be. But they do need to be combed out every couple of three weeks. Um, it's, so it's a fairly easy maintenance coat. Um, but then once you comb them out, they need to be wet down because you want these characteristic curls in the coat. And then you just neaten them up with the scissors. And they don't have a thick coat like some of the other breeds do, so they're much, much easier to groom. And actually what you're seeing today are a white and a black one, but the most common color is gray. Um, they're born black and then fade to gray. And um, then also they come in a fawn color. The, um, the height range between um, males and females runs from 15 uh, for females. Uh, for males, the uh, tallest would be 18 and a half but they're quite light bodied. And so uh, the weight is typically between 20 and 30 pounds. They're extremely easy to train because they're so smart and they do want to please. Um, they have what we call a good work ethic. They make incredible agility dogs um, and herding dogs and whatever you want to do with them, fly ball, nose work, um, any kind of dog sports. They like doing things right the first time. Um, so they don't take uh, correction training and the corrections very well. So they really do well with positive, uh, totally positive training. They do bark but not without reason. They're a really good alert dog. They do let you know that there's something unusual going on. They're great with children um, as long as they're raised with them I'm, and most dogs are, are that way. They will do anything you want to do with them but they do need to have an activity. Not necessarily run loose but at least work off some of the energy and do things with their people. Um, so you could have one in an apartment, but you'd have to be really committed to getting that dog out every day and be able to, um, to have, do some activities with that dog at the same time. So as long as they get some activity during the day, they're happy to just chill out with you watching TV or, or at the computer. Um, or whatever. <laughs> okay, Malda. <laughs> That's enough. And some of them really like to kiss. <laughs>